Hello everyone, welcome to That's Creative podcast. This is the last episode in the season of That's Creative, so congratulations on making it this far. Apologies again for any sort of sound that may have been deafening your ears or not deafening your ears. It was recorded through the internet during the first lockdown, so hopefully the sound hasn't been that bad. Please like, subscribe, follow whatever platform you're listening on. In this episode, we spoke to Rosie Hill. Creative activities have a strong reputation for being calming and relaxing. So what does artist, yoga and meditation leader Rosie have to say about it? creative thanks for joining us so for those people listening who may not know who you are how about we just uh, give them a brief intro so what's the beginning of your creative adventure and how did you get into it why those type of things right so hello I'm Rosie um, I um, am a trained fine artist so I went to university and studied uh, fine art and I made predominantly sculptures um, and from university I met a lot of different people I did a lot of traveling and then I got into um, henna tattoos right. um, so when I graduated I launched um, a business traveling to the UK's music festivals doing henna tattoos um, and then slowly I began bringing in um, wellness and I, I realized that a lot of people I met were looking for an escape so especially at these festivals or different events people were looking for an escape um, so since then, I've started to build up my own well-being brand. Uh, yeah, helping people find um, headspace and yeah, creativity. Yeah. Cool. So sculpture at university to henna tattoos is quite uh, a difference. How did <laughs> yeah. you how did you decide to make that transition, or was there um, something that made you think, oh, sculpture? No something else <laughs> well I think so so the sculptures I made were I worked with metal so it was quite different to what I'm doing now right. so I was making using like big power tools and it's more because I was quite clumsy so right. I couldn't break <laughs> them really it was, but I, I, a lot of it was I was really interested in um, putting people inside the sculptures so they were reflective so the sculptures themselves would distort and abstract people's images when they right. looked in it but they themselves were put into the into the sculptures but I realized I was actually trying to create um, a space of inclusivity so everyone could see themselves, like actually see themselves in the sculptures, which led me to wanting to create spaces where people could see each other, come together in, in a community and kind of look inside themselves. Uh, with the henna, that was more about, I loved meeting new people and I would build, I've got this um, festival shop, which I build and take down. So that kind of filled the, sculpture building side for me mm -hmm. yeah that's really interesting so so it's interesting that you you talk about you know uh, your sculpture and henna as, as ultimately about connecting people um and you know that being a real and i suppose actually when you're doing a henna tattoo actually that's a very personal thing to do for someone isn't it because i presume you're doing it on their body and how long does that take and like actually is it a bit like you know when you go to the hairdresser and you have a conversation with your hairdresser you know it's like a uniquely intimate space and conversation you don't really have with anyone else so like what what is that like when you're doing that for people yeah exactly so i, I have it's probably about um f five ten minutes depending on on kind of how busy i am but yeah for, for that 10 minutes i'm you know holding someone's hand almost and and doing the henna and it yeah it's quite an intimate experience and they come into my stall and I've created this space that's uh, colourful and exciting and I think with the henna I, I love it because it's like a personal adornment so it's like someone expressing themselves and you can physically see how someone wants to express themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean the henna tattoos obviously would take uh, some time to uh, get used to uh, or train yourself for, to build it up as into a better of a skill is that something that you did at university or was it completely a new thing that after university this is what you were going to do and sculpture was just a no more thing but the I as Gareth said the concept of bringing people into spaces still traveled on through to do the henna work and stuff yeah so, so I um I actually went to India when I was 16 oh, wow. and I volunteered at an orphanage and um, we were working with all the kids and then one of the kids got henna and they were painting it on us all and I loved it and um, they were like teaching me how to do it and because I've always been quite creative I can draw I just picked it up 
and did it on different people and then I brought it back um brought it back with me and it was just something that I always did uh, with friends and family and again it would be sort of like connecting people together so we'd all talk and I'd do henna and um and then I just got the opportunity someone was having a festival at university that was hosting a festival and they were like oh do you want to come along and I think just the idea of being able to do something that I loved connect with people and you know drawing on people and people would pay me for it sort of seemed like the <laughs> ideal job I couldn't quite believe <laughs> that people would let me do it um yeah and it just kind of evolved it evolved from there and and I think this, the sculpture um it's all connected and it's not sort of like I'm never going to make sculptures again right. you know I'm using some of the, the tools I learned from that now and maybe I'll bring them more in in the future um but I definitely use the the skills that I created that I cultivated during uni about creating space when I'm hosting live events I, I create these spaces and these rooms where people walk in and they feel really calm connected with other people and you know feel that stillness yeah um, I think that's really obviously you know with our proper painting hats on you know creating an, an inviting space is you know and a, and a, and a non-threatening space is really important and I think it's really interesting that you you know you cultivated your skills at music festivals which I imagine aren't typically the most arty places in the world you know in the, in the visual sense and um, you know those are lots of like really ordinary people so how how did you how do you make henna look really accessible to other people? What, what, what is it that appeals about it, do you think? Well, I, th I think, at, so actually, I think at festivals, it's they're kind of like this weird bubble of society where people can be really expressive. Mm -hmm. So you know, there's this kind of culture of everyone wearing bright colours and glitter on their face and dancing and like, um, you know, walking up to someone and saying, hi, what's your name? It's kind of this weird bubble of, um, of culture where people feel kind of really free to express themselves mm. outside, you know, it's like outside of normal society. So I actually felt like I slotted in quite easily where people were like, oh yeah, you know, I can wear this on my skin for the festival. And then when I leave this bubble of um, sort of loveliness and color, mm -hmm. I still have the henna on my skin and it's you know like a um that continues on when they go home away from the festival but I've also found in um pop-up painting you know obviously a big a huge part of it is it's like fun and you're meeting up with friends and laughing having drinks but I always get people c coming up to me say afterwards saying oh I just feel so relaxed now you know I didn't <laughs> think of anything apart from the painting while I was there mm. and, you know mm. and having that kind of um you know going into an environment where you're away from all of your everyday worries or things you're thinking about can be so powerful even if it's just for an hour to do painting it can yeah. make such a difference to people the ability or just having something to make you switch off or the having the excuse to just to not do everything that you should be doing but do something else exactly just and for I, any any reason really i think yeah. it's i think it's actually about being present i think mm. it's, yeah. it's about being present so when you're doing something like painting with your with your hands you're really focused on just your hand and your body and creating that line or making that mark your you your brain can't think of all these other things so you have to just focus yeah. i guess that's the same concept as, as meditation mm. you know you're just focusing on one thing yeah tell us a little bit about your your meditation work and like your your dabbling in wellness and like how you built that business um like and is, is it related to your henna or are they separate how do they all interconnect and actually as a really basic question, what is meditation? Um, right, so, where do I start? So, <laughs> yeah. so uh, well, but basically, I've always been interested in um, helping facilitate people talking and people finding relaxation. And I think that stemmed from me creating these, you know, these intimate spaces in my doing henna or with my sculptures. And um, during everything that's going on at the moment, with covid it's forced me to um stop thinking about this go 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 doing you know doing lots of freelance work doing all my festivals and i actually had to think right what what could i do in this space and i think it came up that a lot of people were looking to find escapism from mm. the kind of being stuck in their homes or you know stresses that people you know everyone's been going yeah. through um yes yeah, so it brought these I realized it was important to start doing more of these wellness events um and so a big part of of what i do is meditation so meditation is basically i think it can 
sometimes the concept of meditation can feel a bit unobtainable and it's sort of sometimes branded as you have to believe in certain things or you have to be like a yogi or a hippie to do it yeah. but I think it really it's just finding stillness and it's just finding like a, uh, yourself in the present moment mm -hmm. so really it's just clearing your mind and coming back into your body focusing on your breath mm. and you can do it for five minutes you can do it for half an hour but you know if you do it consistently it can people really can you know feel a difference mm. um, so so what i do with in my events or my online retreats is uh, a form of meditation which is called guided journey meditation so what i do is rather than saying clear your mind because when i when you say think of nothing suddenly you're like oh and then you think of everything you need to do you know it's, it's like saying yeah. don't think about this paintbrush and then you think about the paintbrush <laughs> um so instead what i do is i talk you through it so you just follow my words and you can allow your brain to drift almost like a daydream mm. and what i'll do is i'll take you to different places so it might be to a forest to underwater up a mountain um and i will almost like paint a picture i'll, I'll give you the sketch so i'll talk you through it but your brain fills in all the colors and fills in all the details mm. and by tapping into like this unconscious side of yourself you can it reveals things to you that maybe you weren't thinking of or you pushed out of your mind you didn't let yourself think so in this safe space you, you can sort of allow your mind to drift and wander into these new pastures mm. these new places right. so do you so so when you're when you're when you're leading these sessions do you find that there are certain themes or settings that are particularly like conducive for people so like you mentioned a forest or actually could it be any number of scenes that people imagine oh yeah it could be anything so um there's different places that are more conducive to different things so for example if you want to feel grounded if, if you're feeling like in your head you've got lots of different ideas and you don't know what you're what you're thinking having an environment which grounds you which mm -hmm. you know you're, you're touching the earth can really help calm you down so that could be a forest that could be climbing up a tree or you know some, something like that um or going into like a crystal cave Whereas if you're feeling maybe creatively blocked and you're feeling like, oh, I can't see, you know, I've got all these ideas or, or I can't, I can't solidify this idea. Doing something more airy, like going up in a hot air balloon and looking out over a landscape or going, you know, swimming in water. These environments uh, help more with those themes and topics. So when you have a group of people together, how, how do you decide which journey or meditation to take them on if maybe a bunch of these people feeling completely different? So what I normally do is I host my events in accordance with the moon cycles. Oh. Right. Because um, with um, a full moon and a new moon, there tends to be much heightened, much more heightened energy. So oh. on a full moon, in hospitals and in prisons, they up the staff because people go a bit crazy or people <laughs> like emotions kind of bubble up. And, um, you know, I, I don't know if it's a, it was a full moon last night. Yeah. On the last couple of days, I haven't been able to sleep very well. And sometimes people find that they can't sleep or they're, they've got lots and lots of thoughts in their mind. So doing a meditation can be really helpful to uh, see a bit clearly. So to either empty your mind declutter your mind or to focus your mind and then in accordance with that i normally do a meditation depending on kind of what astrological sign it is right because people just in general people tend to feel, like at the moment it's um, um pisces it's pisces right. moon which <laughs> is water so people tend to feel more emotions bubbling up oh. so doing doing a meditation in accordance with that but that's that's more for my events where would you suggest people go and find this information out if they wanted to know the moon phases and the star signs of whatever? Is that something that you've just discovered yourself or did you obviously learn it somewhere? <laughs> yeah, well, so there's so much information online. There's so much information online, so many amazing resources. Um, I personally went at the, so at the beginning of the year, just before lockdown, I travelled to Guatemala. Right. And I did a sacred space holding course, which was incredible. <laughs> and I literally lived in a treehouse for three weeks. 
and so I, I learned yeah. yeah so I learned a lot of what I know during that experience I, I, and there's lots of kind of books out there that you can read um, mm. but yeah m- online there's a, there's a lot of resources and I share a lot of those on my page as well mm. okay yeah. what was living in a tree house like well it was so it was an eco farm what's that where we stayed so, so the whole um the whole place was completely eco-friendly so for example the shop all the toilets were compost toilets and we were like living on this hill so yeah. and then the shower was uh, from the stream and it was heated by the sun and then you were showering and it was completely open so you were like looking out over this valley wow. <laughs> um, and, and then all the could food... people see you shower well it was up a mountain Right. So, <laughs> so the people that you were with from afar. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, like, you could close the door, but the front was open. So. Oh, right. Okay. I mean, it was all like free, like free, and <laughs> yeah. Maybe not in England, but in Guatemala, it was okay. <laughs> that sounds very calming. Um, so, yeah. so sort of taking a step back, um, and one of the things that you you keep coming back to is you know creating spaces and relaxation and you know items around that what are the key components of making a space relaxing um like um you know is it to do with color or layout or like how do, how do you think about creating a space that is conducive to relaxation and creation so i th- i think a massive part of it is um your intention behind how you're creating this space so if it's um just for your own personal bedroom so maybe your bedroom is your safe space the place that you feel calm or maybe it's your lap you know in your house you can you know it's about decluttering things making sure that everything you've put down is there for a reason Mm. so if there's something that means something to you or if you you know are a lover of nature making sure that you've got flowers and plants around you maybe stripping back harsh lighting I always use a lot of candles especially when I'm doing my my events and also my bedroom my bedroom is like my zen den I have you know for me I love color and I love um, creativity so I have lots of paintings and prints up it kind of depends or some people just want everything very clean if their mind's very cluttered they want everything very very clean Um, but when I'm creating a space for a group of people and it's also for example if you're having a dinner party uh, you want to create a space where all your friends come along and feel calm you can do the same by you know setting the table or creating a space where everyone can see everybody I know we do that a lot in pop-up painting events mm. um, yeah. and it's also um, creating an environment as you welcome you know welcoming environment um, and creating a space where everyone feels on the same level so there's no one that's you know hierarchical even if you're hosting the event you know you're hosting it and facilitating what's going on but you don't want to be dominating you want everyone to be able to talk and making sure that everyone has their chance to talk which is the same I guess if you're having a dinner party or just friends over you can do the same thing yeah um I suppose another question for you and sort of thinking about how how all of this like relates to you um, you know, one of the things uh, that, you know, you know, I wonder, I wonder whether our personality drives what we do or what we do drives our personality. Um, mm, and so, you know, you talked a lot about, you know, calmness and being creative. Do you think you've been attracted to meditation and henna and creating all of these things because you yourself are calm and inherently creative? Or do you think that you've like become much calmer and more creative by doing these activities? Yeah, that's a really good question. I, I definitely think I've become calmer mm. and I've become much more confident in my, in myself just because I can, now I can like breathe and think what I'm going to say or, or, or whatever. But I think a lot of people, a lot of people pursue what they need in their life themselves. Mm. So for me, it was like creating community and finding like-minded people. And um, yeah, I, th- I think at, at uni, there was a lot of partying and lots of, lots of people that wasn't a lot of like deep connection Mm. um you know whereas when I was making art and people were talking about it and coming together I was like wow this is quite powerful that Mm. everyone's like having real conversations maybe rather than kind of face value so I definitely think I started doing it more because that's what I've needed in in my life but since I've been doing it yeah it's changed changed me 
I'm so much more mm -hmm. calmer, much more confident, and I can I use all the, these practices to kind of see clearly what I need to do next, rather than worrying about things. I can see things from like a perspective from above. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's really interesting that you say that. So I think when a lot of people talk about, uh, or think about meditation and people who, who aren't really familiar with it, you know, the, the stereotype will just clear your mind, you know, be, be like completely mindless. Um, and that's the complete opposite of what you've been talking about, where you focused on, you know, actually being like a deep focus. So mm. why do you think people think of meditation as sort of this like blank mindness rather than still mindness? Like they're quite similar, con or they, they sound similar, but they're subtly very different. Yeah, well, I, I think so, so. What I do is it's just one form of meditation. Mm. Um, so for people who are starting off, it can be really hard to just blank and still mind. It, it can be very hard to achieve mm. that. So through following a story, mm. it's more attainable for people. Mm. Um, but a lot of what I do in my events um, and what I always say to people is, you know, meditation isn't for everyone. And it's about finding things in your life where you can find this stillness. Mm -hmm. So whether it's through painting, whether it's through being creative and, you know, drawing or, you know, you get the colouring in books, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. Or whether it's through running or doing something physical where you're just really in your body or cooking where you're, you know, just tasting and adding. You're just really present in all these mm -hmm. activities. Um, and if meditation seems unattainable to you, then there's so many different ways that you can find the stillness. I don't think it's necessarily about blank mind. I think it's more about finding presence mm. to be mm. really present in each activity and mindful of what you're doing. Um, even if it's just for like 10 minutes a day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I've got, I've got another question for you about, about mm. that finding stillness, like over the last six months. So, you know, okay. in lockdown, to me, I think it, it seems like it's much more difficult for a lot of people to actually take those moments to be in a different setting and to be still and to be present, especially, you know, if people are, you know, they're working from home. So all of that is there. They've got their children around. So all of that is there. Have you, how have you found that like your clients or the people that you've been talking to have been managing that over the last six months? Like, has it been possible for people? Definitely. Yeah. Well, I think there's, there's been such a contrast in either people having to work from home and creating a new routine mm. or there's been people who have had no job and they've having to, they have no routine at all because their days are free. So I think a lot of it is about finding, however, both of you, both situations, we have actually more power now mm. because you, you have the power to create your own routine. And um, I think, you know, now that the commuting's down, you know, going out, we can't go out as much. People have a lot more time for themselves, which can be actually quite intimidating, I think, because, mm. you know, myself included and a lot of my friends, you know, every single night we're doing something and they would just never have a spare moment. They'd be working, then they'd be going out and then sleeping when they can. <laughs> but, um, you know, now we have so much more time for stillness and it can be really intimidating because these things that you are like, oh, I don't need to think about that. I don't need to worry about that. Suddenly people have to sit and be like, oh, maybe I need to need to face this thing or, or, or I now have this opportunity to pursue this creative thing that mm. I've been interested in or yeah. this passion. It's yeah, and it's funny that you, you say that because um, when we've been doing the online corporate events, we've asked the questions, you know, has anybody uh, found a new skill or just decided to start something new with all this like free time that they might have? And some of them have said they've started crocheting, trying to learn Chinese, wow. <laughs> it's like, or, you know, a attacking that thousand piece puzzle that, that they just wouldn't have <laughs> never had time yeah. to do. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's quite interesting, but if people are going to come out with a lot of new handy skills. From what yeah, have, and, and also I, th <laughs> I think as well, um, people, for, like for me, I'll always do something because I'm like, oh, I can do that and then I can, that's something I could sell or that's something I'm doing this for a reason. Mm. Whereas because yeah. we've had so much free time, it's lovely to be like, I'm just going to crochet, learn to crochet because why not? You can, yeah. You can, it doesn't matter what it looks like or, you know, whatever. <laughs> you do the thousand piece puzzle and then you break it up. You know, it doesn't, yeah. it's not about the final piece. It's about like the doing, the doing yeah, part the, of it. The process of it. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't want to put a downer on, on lockdown. Um, I, I take quite a more dark view of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's been nice for lots of people. It's also been really horrible for lots of people. Yeah. And I think one of the things that, that we also see is a lot of very, a, actually really lonely people. Um, and I wondered whether, you know, what, what has been sort of your reaction to that and how, how, how have people that you've spoken to dealt with the loneliness thing? So, you know, a lot of people who live by themselves and have spent, you know, more time just by themselves for six months than ever before. Um, how, have, how have you found that ability to connect with people has changed? Yeah, that's so true. I, th I, think, I think now I found that rather than people saying, hey, how are you? I'm doing this and blah, blah, blah. They don't really, you don't really care not that you don't care but people are now asking how are you really yeah you know people i think it is opening up for conversations and rather than just maybe texting a friend you might call them or facetime them because you want to actually see them mm. um i think that's that's different now also in in a, a lot of the events that i do the people i work with we always have a sharing circle so after we've done uh, the meditation people see it's, it's amazing how I say one thing and everybody sees something completely different and lots of people you know this came up for me or actually I started thinking about this and we make sure that every single person has a chance to speak for like as long as they want and with all of the other people on the screen holding space for that person and like giving that person the chance to talk for as long as they want is really power is really powerful and to start off with people you know might be a bit shy to express and they say a little bit but then as it progresses people start talking more and more and actually even though we've planned this whole event it's the sharing circle that is I think sometimes the most powerful part mm. and that we give the most time for because it's so important to to not only express but also to listen mm. yeah, you yeah. Know, and really listen rather than saying oh you should do this you should do that just letting someone talk is, yeah. is so helpful I think yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think it's it's just something we don't. I, I think you're right. You know, people have asked, that, mm. and then they're, they're more just sincerely interested. Like, well, actually, this is really hard. If you to always be okay, just isn't normal. Um. Yeah. So yeah, I just thought it was really an interesting sort of topic to to pick up on. Um, and I think as well, if you're say, say for example, if you now have friends over, mm. it's do you not think that now it's just so lovely to see people in real life it's yeah. such like, a, like oh I've missed you so much and and like you to actually like have a conversation rather than being like oh I saw this thing on my phone or looking at it's I feel like people are so much more engaged with each other because you know it's amazing we can talk online but actually being physically with people I think it's really made you know I think we took it for granted and I think people are realizing how lovely yeah. it is to actually be with people yeah, it's nice to like hang out with people who aren't always looking at their phone all the time. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. It's just like you're actually engaged with each other. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Rosie, as the world starts to go back to normal, what's on the horizon for you? And sort of as a, as a parting question, where can people find out more and where can people join your workshops and things like that? So, I am, I've been building these uh, this community of people who are all interested in uh, expressing themselves in meditation finding mindfulness creativity so all of my information is on I've got a website called rosiehillhenna.com and also my Instagram is just rosiehillhenna and all of the information is there but I've got I'm not sure when this will be coming out but I've at the moment I'm working with uh, Evolve Collective and mm -hmm. we do yoga, meditation and uh, mindfulness and some kind of ceremony. And then I've also got Unity Community, which is more of an expressive dance. Um, my sister, who's a DJ, makes a, uh, wow. a special mix for it. So for everyone to dance to, they can listen to afterwards. And again, we've got the meditation element in there as well. And it's just a really lovely place for people to come together, to join, to talk. Um, in community basically okay yeah great um that's well really Rosie, good. thank you very much um yeah. and uh yeah we'll be sharing that with everyone else so thank you very much yeah thank you thanks for having me